In this lecture, I just wanted to cover some basic background in hexadecimal notation and ASCII representation. This is the kind of material that you've probably seen already if you're a computer science undergraduate. On the other hand, it's also the sort of material that people sometimes assume that their students know, and so depending on the exact sequence of courses you've taken uh, and the professors with whom you've taken them, you may never have seen this material explicitly presented in any class. I also wanted to cover this material for those of you who aren't computer science majors, so that you'll be able to follow the following lecture where we describe an implementation of the one-time pad scheme. So hexadecimal notation is just a way of describing integers in a different base other than the usual decimal base that we're familiar with. Hexadecimal notation uses base 16, which means that as opposed to the standard 10 digits that we're used to, we're going to use a system in which there are 16 digits. Those digits are represented by the numbers 0 through 9, along with the six letters A through F. And as indicated in the table here, each of those hexadecimal digits corresponds to a different value in the range of 0 to 15. So the hex digits 0 through 9 correspond to the values 0 through 9. And then the hex digit A corresponds to 10, the hex digit B corresponds to 11, and so on up through the hex digit F, which corresponds to the value 15. Hex digits are also very convenient because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between each hex digit and sequences of four bits, which are sometimes also called a nibble. Right? Four bits is exactly half of a byte, which is eight bits. And so uh, a sequence of four bits is sometimes also referred to as a nibble. So as you see here, again, the hex digit zero corresponds to the nibble zero, 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 and so on up through the hex digit F, which corresponds to the nibble one, 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 one. Now these correspondences aren't arbitrary. What you'll see is that each, car each hex digit corresponding to a particular nibble um, corresponds to the value of that nibble if you view it as a binary integer. So just as an example, if we look at the hex digit F, right, that corresponds to the nibble 1111, and in binary notation, the value 1111 corresponds to the number that we obtain, or the value that we obtain, by adding 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, right? Each successive uh, sequence in a binary number uh, has value twice the preceding one. So 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is in fact equal to the value 15, which is the value that corresponds to the hex digit f. We can work through just a simple example uh, to see how uh, hex, the values of hex numbers can be calculated. So uh, a value in hex is very often represented by prepending the prefix 0x to the value. So if we try to calculate the value of the hex number 10, well, just as in uh, the, as the case in decimal, where each position is, has value 10 times the previous one, and in binary, each position has value twice the previous one, in hexadecimal notation, each position has value 16 times the previous one. So the hex number 10 has value equal to 16 times 1 plus 0 times 1, which in this case uh, just reduces to 0. So the value of the hex number 10 is equal to 16 represented in standard decimal notation. We can also represent that in terms of binary representation. And it's very easy to do that exactly because each hex digit corresponds to a nibble. So if we try to write out the binary representation of the hex number 10, well, we can just express that as the nibble corresponding to 1 followed by the nibble corresponding to 0, and that's just 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. And again, that corresponds to the value 16 if we view that 8-bit number as a binary number. Right here we have only a single 1 in the fifth position. The fifth position in a binary number has value 16, and so the binary integer 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0 is exactly equal to 16, and everything works out nicely. Just as a second example, uh, I have the uh, hexadecimal number AF. AF is equal to, or has value, 16 times the value of A plus 
the value of f times 1. The value of a is 10, the value of f is 15. So we have 16 times 10 plus 15 times 1 is equal to 175. And so the hex number af is equal to the decimal number 175. And again, if you write that out in binary, then the hex number af is equal to the binary number 10101111. And you can check for yourself that viewed as a number in binary, that is indeed equal to the decimal number 175. So nothing very magical or mysterious there. The next thing I wanted to talk about briefly is ASCII representation. Right, ultimately everything in a computer is represented uh, as bits. And ASCII representation is very often used to represent English letter characters. In ASCII representation, uh, each character is represented using one byte, or eight bits, or equivalently, two hex digits. Here we have a table indicating the correspondences between characters in the English uh, alphabet, along with other characters as well, and their corresponding ASCII equivalent. Uh, you can find this table online. Uh, I've just inclu included it here for convenience. You can see that alongside every character, uh, the table includes both their uh, ASCII representation written in hex as well as in decimal. Again, that's just for convenience, and you can check that all the numbers line up uh, by, performing, by performing a calculation just like we did a moment ago. So just to go walk through an example, if we look at the character 1, right, which is the, the numeral 1, that has value uh, hex 31 in the ASCII representation. So that means that if you have a file, say, and somewhere in that file you have the character 1, that would actually be recorded in your computer as the hex value 31, or really, what, at the lower level, it would be represented as a sequence of bits 00110001. Right, so the nibble corresponding to 3 and the nibble corresponding to 1. The key thing I'm pointing out here is that the character 1 is not the same thing as the number 1. Right, the character 1 is just a character and it's arbitrarily been assigned the ASCII value, the ASCII, uh, or the value in the ASCII representation of hex 31. And if you have a character 1 in a file, it's not stored as the single bit 1, it's stored as the uh, byte given by what's displayed here, 00110001. And similarly, if we're representing the character capital F, well, the character capital F corresponds in the ASCII representation to the value hex 46 which corresponds to the sequence of 8 bits, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And so the character f in a file would ultimately be represented in your computer as the sequence of 8 bits described here. Now one point I want to make, and this is a bit of an advanced point, and if you don't understand it, uh, I wouldn't really worry about it uh, very much, but um, this is going to come into play when we show the implementation of the one-time pad in the next lecture. The question is, how should we store the value hex 1f, for example, to a file? And there are two natural ways we could go about doing this. The first possibility is what I'll call native hex. So we'll store the value exactly as the sequence of bits that it represents. So we've seen already that the hex value 1f corresponds to the sequence of 8 bits 00011111. So what we could do is just store the value hex 1f to a file as the sequence of 8 bits 00011111. Now that's all well and good. The problem with that is that if we then try to view that file using a standard text editor, we'll get an unprintable character. And if you go back and look at the ASCII table, you'll see that the hex value 1f corresponds to some unprintable character, not a regular character in the alphabet or a numeral or a punctuation or anything like that. That's okay if all you're doing is reading to that file from a program, but it's inconvenient if we're trying to look at the file uh, or manipulate the file by hand. A second possibility is to store the hex value 1f as the ASCII characters 1f. If we do that, then recall that every ASCII character is represented using one byte. So what we now have is something stored using two bytes rather than one. That is using 16 bits rather than eight. Right, if we store the ASCII characters 1f to a file, then what we'll end up actually storing in terms of bits 
is 00110001 right? which I obtained just by looking up the character 1 in the ASCII file, the character f in the ASCII file, and writing out their corresponding representations. Now, if we view this file using a text editor or from the command line, we see what we expect. We see the character's 1f. If we read it from a program, then what the program is going to see is that sequence of 16 bits. And so we just need to be careful to tell the program to convert that sequence of 16 bits into the hex value 1f. For many programs, there's a standard way provided to do that. Uh, it's also not extremely difficult to do that on your own, uh, or to build a small macro to do it on your own. You just have to be careful to keep track of how you're representing your hex values in the file. We'll see this come into play in a little bit more detail in the following lecture.